Fuel is the official podcast of the 434th Air Refueling Wing. Join us for airman connections, leadership insights, mentorship, and happenings mixed with some fun and humor. Please understand that the views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of the U.S. Air Force nor the Air Force Reserve, and no endorsement of any person or business is ever intended. To the August edition of the Fuel Podcast. I'm the host, uh, Chief Nathan Parks. I'm the Command Chief here at Grissom. Always with me is Tech Sergeant Josh the Dream Weaver. Josh just had a birthday, so uh, happy another year made it. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> this year, but... Yeah, this year was a survival year for it you, was, too. Yeah. You built a house and Man, it, all kinds of surviving. Your marriage survived that. You're barely, but we're still hanging on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, was that uh, Sergeant Chapin that said the first thing he does when he backs his RV in is apologize to his wife. That's uh, standard operating procedure for backing anything. Yeah. So, uh, hey, this morning uh, we're in here with some heavy hearts with our uh, with the flag at half staff with Congresswoman Horlowski's passing yesterday. Um, man, she was a great friend of Grissom's. She was relentless in her pursuit to, to make Grissom, um, you know, be here for a long time, make sure that we're getting the missions that, that we should be getting. Uh, she did a lot of work in Congress and, uh, I posted a picture on our Instagram page of, of her setting with, uh, General Scobie and Chief White, and she would she would have those meetings. And the last time I, I talked with Chief White, um, he said, man, that Congresswoman of yours, she loves the Airmen of Grissom and she fights hard for him. And so we lost a great friend there and a, and a great ally. And our hearts and our prayers uh, go out to her family as well as her staff's family and, and all of those involved with, with that accident. So. Um, if you see the flags flying at half staff, that's why. Um, so uh, we also, uh, due to the uh, current COVID numbers in the surrounding counties, uh, not not necessarily what's on base, but we only have like two cases of COVID on base right now, but due to the surrounding counties and the guidance that has been given to us, um, we uh, made the decision to go back into uh, wearing mask because of of what the numbers are right now and everything. And I, I assure you, I promise you, we are daily, hourly uh, looking at those numbers. And as soon as they show relief, uh, we will come back out of those. But but understand for the next, you know, I don't know how long. Uh, we, I thought at was, least at least this UTA. Yeah, at least this UTA for right now, we're going to be wearing mask. So as you come out, don't forget a mask. Let's be um, supportive of each other and, and let's not let the fact that we're wearing masks, um, keep us from having a great UTA. Uh, a lot of you are participating in an exercise and, and some of you aren't, and some of you are, maybe you aren't even here. And again, if you're not here, uh, great, good on you for, for listening. But, uh, um, yeah, I hate to deliver that, um, this news up front, but we felt like it was very important that, that we address that. Um, so, uh, appreciate you guys being strong. If you have any questions, if you need any support, if you, um, if there's anything out there, uh, this UTA that's hitting you a little hard, we have the, the resources available here. Just, uh, get with your supervisors or get with us and, and, and we'll help you get, find the right resources. So now let's, uh, let's get into the, the podcast and we have a, a great interview with, uh, one of our favorites, Chief Cassidy. All right, welcome to uh, the long-awaited interview between uh, you know with with Chief Cassie. So so welcome, Chief. Uh, Good morning. Great yeah. to be here. Yeah. So uh, first off, uh, why don't you kind of introduce yourself where you're at? I'm Chief Cassidy. I've uh, I've been here a number of years. I'm currently the superintendent of AMXS and also the group superintendent of the MXG. Yeah. So dual hatted, right? So you're doing two jobs right now. And uh, don't think we're going to breeze by. Uh, when did you get here? 
I got here uh, early 1984. 1984. When were you born? 80, uh, no, 78. Okay. Josh, when were you born? <laughs> Thanks, Josh. <laughs> yeah. When were you born? Nah, uh, uh, God, how, why did it take you so long to figure out when you were born? Well, I knew when I, I was born. I was trying to. I the daily that's yeah, older than you. I was trying to find <laughs> so. a way to work in there that it was my birthday, but on Saturday, but I also don't like people to know that because then they do stuff yeah, like. Nice job working it in Anyways, back to whatever. Chief Cast. What's up? <laughs> uh, so you're over there. How long have you been in maintenance the whole time? I have. I, I was, uh, came in in fuel cell and in, in MXS or at the time it was FMS. And then, uh, at some point jumped over to the reserves, went to hydraulic shop, went back to fuel shop, uh, went to PE, uh, which is periodic inspections, went to, uh, become a pro super, went to QA and then went to become a superintendent in the MXS. And then went to the MOF, which is the maintenance operations, mm-hmm. and then went to the group. And then now I'm over in AMXS. Yeah, I love it. Love, love all the different, the different stops along the way. So you came here originally active duty. Yes, sir. I was active duty until 88. And then uh, next day started as an art and a reservist in, in 88. So what is your, do you, do you have one memory that maybe sticks out here? Like over this last time, the, the, the amount of time that you've been here up to now. Like, do you have one that maybe just really sticks out? You know, and this is so cliche, right? I remember the first day getting here. Really? Uh, yeah. I, and this is so <laughs> silly. <laughs> I remember driving. I rode a bus to Kokomo, uh, got off a, a taxi. I Where'd you ride a bus from? Uh, from Chicago. So you you flew into Chicago? Or right. So I, I left tech school. And then at that time, you had some time off after tech school. And then you came here. Uh, your first duty station. So I, I rode a bus from my hometown into Chicago and then Chicago down to Kokomo and then, um, or from Indy then to Kokomo and then rode a taxi from uh, Kokomo to, to Grissom and got off at the Grissom Inn. Uh, and I just remember thinking, holy cow, uh, I'm not in small town Illinois anymore. Yeah. But I, you know, the, the uniforms back then were just solid green. Uh, I, I was just... This is so long ago. Hair parted in the middle, and it was dark then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah Prove was, it. This is crazy because yeah, I had, I had hair parted in the middle too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That was the thing. That yeah. was the thing back then. But yeah, it was, and ju- I just remember walking in and seeing how big these airplanes were, uh, and just remember thinking, "Wow, this is it, it's starting here." Same planes. Yep, same planes, different models. So they had A models back then, and they were smaller engines with water injection system to get them off the ground. So, yep. But same airplanes, same tails, no different tails. Yeah. Um, back then active duty had probably 35 tails, uh, just active duty KC 135s. Then we had 28 tens and, uh, the reserves was here with like eight one thirty fives, And, uh, we had some T 37s. It was a, it was, this base was, was hopping. A lot yeah. of planes, yeah. man, a lot. Yeah, we didn't, you know, I worked fuel cell back then. So we didn't have um, weekend standby. We had weekend duty. It was, you you worked. If you wanted to leave or if you wanted the weekend off, you took leave. Really? Yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah. But it was, it, I mean, you you learned that airplane quick. So is that what, that was like a, a called a SAC base back then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we were SAC. Um, we would have uh, exercises quite a bit and recalls. Quite a bit. That Hangar 200 was was ours back then, and we we uh, had the exercises in there, and, and uh, we it was a different different back then. Uh, the alert out there was actually had airplanes there, and not cars, yeah. and uh, we it was it was pretty busy. So day one, mm-hmm. you know, and then Airman Cassidy, Airman Basic, Airman Basic. So you were slick sleep. Yep. When you showed up here, did people salute you? Like they still do slick sleeves? No, I, I looked the part. <laughs> <laughs> they were still like, so you come in from, from small town, Illinois. Yeah. Where are you from? Like what's Freeport, the, Illinois. It's, Freeport. it's, it's up right on the border of Illinois and Wisconsin. Okay. Home of the pretzels. But you're a, <laughs> you're, are you a Bears fan or are you I'm a, a Bears fan and, yeah. and, and a White Sox fan. And in my world, that's it. Uh, there's yeah. no Packers, no Cubs. So that's a rough life that you've No, I don't lived, think so. Right. 
Yeah. So 85 bears. 85, 85 bears. That's right. That was riding around that time. <laughs> so were you just living high? You get here like an 84 and 85. The yeah, bears I thought that's just the way it was going to be. I didn't yeah, know they would never win another one. <laughs> yeah, so life, life was going great. So you, you get on there. Like, what was your, can you, can you remember back? Like, what was your idea? Like, okay, I'm going to be here for three years and then I'm out. Yeah. I remember telling my dad that like, okay, four years is not that long. Four years is not that long. And, and as you get into it, you, that's exactly what you do. You get into it. And the Mm -hmm. more you work, the more you like it, the more you love it and the more confidence you get and the more confidence you get, the more, the more you want to dig into it. So why, why the military? Like what, what drove you to the military? So in my small town is, is um, like two companies and two factories and, and, most of my relatives uh, worked in in Honeywell and uh, or Microswitch is what it was called back mm-hmm. then, and I didn't want to I didn't want to do that the rest of my life. So uh, played a lot of baseball, wasn't good enough to go any farther with it. So how was your modeling career? My modeling career, um, not very good. I was a hand model. Hand model, but <laughs> mostly. <laughs> the baseball messed that up. No, but yeah, I, I, so I decided I had, I had to do something. I had to get out of town. Not because people were after me, but just because I had to do something different. Now, now more people after me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so your, your plan was stay four years and then. Then maybe, um, you know, work at an airport or something. But uh, uh, again, uh, four years and then I reenlisted. And then uh, some art jobs opened up. I could see these guys walking around civilian clothes and, yeah. and making good money. I Back thought, man, I, I think I can do that. So did you have a desire for aviation, like to fly or was your desire always the the maintainer side of things? Yeah, it's always been main, maintenance. I, um, as a kid, would rip apart bicycles and put mm-hmm. them back together just for the heck of it. And then... Uh, as then I came here. Right. And it's always been to make the side of, I never had a desire to do anything else. Yeah. What was on your, uh, they didn't have playlists back there, but what was your, what was the song that was your jam? Like 84, you came here. Was there like a theme song that you. Like a walk-up song? Yeah. Yeah. Like what Uh, was your, in 84, what was your (laughs) walk-up song? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I want to check it out. Like I want to see what. So I was, I was into Curtis Blow. Uh, I was into a lot of the R and B stuff back then. Yeah. Yeah. You st- Cameo. You st- yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. You still, uh, you still like Houdini. The- <laughs> Stevie Wonder. You want me to keep going? Oh uh, yeah. Like it, I just, <laughs> I need a walk up song. Like I need something to where every time I see you now, like Rick that James. song will be played in my head <laughs> as you walk it out. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I didn't think that was too young for, that was too early on for like Beastie Boys or yeah, they were too, late yeah, there. They yeah. to- so, okay. Well, hold on. Follow on question there. Do you think we should have walk up songs to oh, the Jets? Do I? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So when I was a when I was a one Charlie is, I, every pilot I had a walk up song and a walk out song too. And so when they, especially when we were deployed, and they would get everything and they were getting ready to walk out to the, I played a some walk out music, and then some of them would come up, you know, because they didn't. Is it, man, if you're gonna if you're gonna play a song, maybe <laughs> maybe, maybe you could, maybe you could play this. Song. Yeah, so then I'm like, hey, this is it. This is what I think of you. Not what, <laughs> not what you. <laughs> so some of them were not happy with their walkout socks, uh, but retirement. Yeah, yep. I, I so Colonel Pemberton, I've talked about that a couple times of doing walkout music, mm-hmm. and so uh, yeah, I, I think everybody should have like a walkout song, and 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 uh, you know, I'm yours on board. would be you're you're. Tupac fan, right? I, I am. Yeah. And I'll probably do the George Jefferson walk. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I can't help that. That's just old age. That's just the way he, that's just the way he walks now. <laughs> yeah. It's not on purpose, folks. It is. So what would be yours, Josh? Oh. Barry Manilow. <laughs> yeah. So you guys try Vince Barry guy. Some Ed Sheeran or something like that. No, it's probably... Mm. I don't know. It's going to be something. You don't from, really listen to music a whole lot, do you? I, you're, no, I you're listen more of a podcast guy. Yeah, but I, I I still listen to a lot of music. But a lot of music that I listened to, uh, I was not alive when it was released. So how about just so Dreamweaver? Like, yeah. No, nope. Come on, that would be a good one. We could just. I mean, I I could do Dream On though. Oh, that would be a good one. Yeah, that would be good. Well, we you? got sidetracked. Me. Uh, I like Simple Man. 
Uh, uh, Shinedown or I like Leonard Shinedown's Skinner. version, but uh, Larry Fleet is he does a version of it that I really like. Uh, and then there's a uh, Lathan Warwick. He's got one that. I may save it because I may just walk out to it like uh, for the, for like my last commander skull here. So a reason it's your last one. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> just to play that one. So it's it's a mix of like country and rap. So I like to call it crap. So it's country rap mix. <laughs> so um, so so you come in, you get in the gig, uh, you're like, hey, uh, you start getting plugged in and stuff. Was it easy sailing? Like, I mean, you're, you're sitting here now as a chief and you know, I think sometimes people are like, oh, well, he's probably always been Chief Casty, right? Even when he was Airman Basic Casty, people probably thought of him as Chief Casty. How'd that go? Uh, you know, there was, as an art, back then, uh, you had senior Airman slots as art. Now they only have staff as low as you go. But I remember, you know, some of that was kind of cutthroat just to get in a slot to where you might be able to get pepped uh, or stuff now. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, you worked hard to try to get in those the, in the right slots and you bounced around a little bit to maybe get in a staff or a tech slot. And then as you do that, you, you learn a different skill, right? It's not the, um, you can't just stay in fuel cell and think you're going to go any higher than, mm -hmm. than a, a tech or a master. Uh, so you, you look for your breaks and I've had so many, uh, just lucky breaks where there was an opening and I had a, a, chief or a senior that believed that I could do it and just gave me a chance. What um, about unlucky breaks? Do you have any of those? Do you have any times where you thought, man, this is where it ends? Um, well, to say I've done everything right is not true. I mean, I've, I've made my mistakes and I've worked for some really good and really bad supervisors. And Can we name them? Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I'll tell you. <laughs> 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 Most of them probably not not alive. That's back in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> but you take away you take take away something from all of good and bad. So um, I've just been able to find breaks and been lucky enough to have supervisors give me those chances. Um, but yeah, I I haven't really had anything where like okay, this is this is where I end. Yeah, I've had jobs I don't like, um, but I've been lucky enough to get out of them. <laughs> Do you remember the first? Like UTA switching over from active duty to, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I've it. It was different. Uh, you know, we had used to have like a, a row of chiefs lined up, and as you came by, they, they were checking you out and make sure you know you were looking good. And, um, and how were how was Airman Cassidy at that time? Well, uh, I'll tell you. Well, I hate <laughs> to tell you. <laughs> But one time I walked in and I had an earring in. <laughs> Didn't make it. Hold on. Didn't Michael, make it. Hold on. Was it the Michael Jordan one? The one the loop? G was it a diamond or a loop? It was uh, a, a diamond and I didn't make so it. So you walk in on a UTA. Yes, sir. And you know you're going to walk past the snake pit there. Yep. And so you got an earring in. Yeah. Were they on your right side or left side? Well, they missed it. And I got back and I went, uh-oh. Uh -oh. And then uh, my supervisor calls and says, hey, we took care of it already. And they said, okay, we saw it. We just wanted to, we wanted to see if he'd take care of it. But they didn't jerk me out of line or anything. But yeah. What, did pretty... you forget you had it in? Yeah. No, I was testing it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I mean, that was really, truthfully, that was like, that was it. I'm, I'm first of all, I'm not wearing it anymore. And, <laughs> and, and next, you know, an old gray hair guy with an earring is probably not a good thing. <laughs> Well, that depends. I mean, are we just looking for laughs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you wear that with your ponytail hat. Yeah. Um, do, do you feel like along the way, though, some of those, because uh, you're, you're here and I, I don't know, I think sometimes people see us and, and we talk about, you know, they're like, well, what, what are they, all they accomplished? We must have accomplished a lot to get here. And I always look back at that and I'm like, man, I failed a lot, which got me here. Yeah, I'm an open book. I, I will tell, and you know this, I will tell stories good and bad. Right. I mean, the, the, yeah, I screwed this up and I screwed this up. But I, and, I, and I do it. I tell those bad stories too where, man, I have, I have screwed up as many as others. And I, and I say it, right? I'm a chief. And if I can do it, you can do it because uh, I've, I've not done everything right. Do you feel like those, the, the failures molded you like to... Um I always think that like that my failures probably molded me more than my successes did. 
Yeah, and my ego's not so huge that I won't tell anybody my failures right. either. Yeah, right. I'll tell you. Yeah, because you know. I don't want you to make the same mistake. Yeah, so if you're listening, is don't show up with an earring. Is what we've learned so far. <laughs> so and hair we'll, parted in the middle. And hair parted in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> so with walkout music, <laughs> that's Tupac. So, yeah. It is there. A, is there a moment where y- y- you kind of had that uh, that I, I forget what they call it, but it's just like the bluing moment. Like whether it was a deployment or something where you're like. You know, I always say we all come here for different reasons, but well, why we stay, you know, it, it, it depends on the experiences we have. Is there experience along the way? Like you're like, man, on this deployment at this time. So a couple of things. One is when I didn't get something I wanted, uh, you know, there was a couple of jobs that I wanted, I didn't get. And then instead of saying, you know, that supervisor just made a bad choice. I started looking at myself and realized, okay, what else can I do? And where was that in your career, do you think? So that was, um, I was in a hydraulic shop and there was some jobs that I wanted and I couldn't get. So like I, I was staff probably, tech. Uh, I was a staff um, and just floundering, right? Just, I, I wasn't getting where I wanted and I could just see myself sitting there and not, and for the next 20 years. And I wasn't sure if that was what I wanted or not. Now, there's some great mechanics that are very happy with that. And, and we need that. Right. And I, I look back sometimes and think that was the best job I ever had. Right. Um, but, you know, something clicked and I just wanted more um, and was given that opportunity. But I had to make myself a little bit more marketable and a little bit more needed. And so I started looking for other opportunities. I, w- I wanted to make myself um, needed. You know, I wanted them to say, I, I, we need you. So, I mean, that sounds pretty, I don't know, you know, pretty. uh no, I cocky, I, but it, I just had to try to find a way to to make myself more marketable. And then I never quit uh, learning that. Like, OK, there's days that I walk out of here thinking, man, that was not a good day. I didn't I didn't get a lot done. And then there's other days walking out like I feel. All right. I got this. But to this point, I mean, I still have those days where yeah. it's like, man, I, I didn't get enough done. today. Or I couldn't I couldn't close the loop on anything yeah. today. Like I felt like I opened more, you know, the more questions after I started asking questions than right. Just you know, kept, that list kept growing. Yeah, and I and I'm and I'm a list guy. I'm, I'll make a list almost every day. I have a <laughs> I have a notepad in my shower, a waterproof notepad. Yeah, if you would come tell to me, me that one time. And, yeah. I, and I'll write that down. I it, it's out right now. I need to get another one. But I I get out of the shower, I make a note. I got to remember this. I'll put yeah. notes in my boot, just like I got to remember this. So I, when I get to work, man, I'm writing notes what I got to remember. So couple, it's just because some of that's because I forget day to day. Oh, I got to get yeah. this done. I got to get this done. And but one, at the end of the day, I'm looking. That's good time management, or you're taking way too long of showers. Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't. We could. I don't. I don't want to get into that here. But I, I, I do love that in the fact that you said, "Hey, you know, I want to make myself kind of irreplaceable here. Like if I go, I want them to think." We, we can't afford for this, this person to go. And, and I've always said, Hey, I want to make it stupid for them. Like it's stupid for them not to put me in that position or it's stupid for them not to promote me or, and, and, and so I always wanted to do the things uh, that I needed to, to where I was ready. And, and I would chased, I don't know about you, but I chased opportunities. Like, I, you know, for me, it was, I want to go do that. And if there's a rank associated with it, cool. But really, I just want that opportunity. But I don't, I always feel like if, if I'm doing my job well, I'll get noticed. Yeah. And, and I don't need to go and look for that next stripe. Looks like that. But you're right on the opportunity thing. Oh, that looks like fun. I think I really want to try yes. that. Or that might be something I'm interested in. Yeah. And, and so it, it's, it's kind of one of those things where, uh, I think sometimes people are like, well, what do I need to do to, to get to that next rank? And it's, it's kind of like, well, what are you doing with what you have right now? But as I, at this point in my career, I'm, I'm more thinking about, okay, what do I got to do to make sure that next guy's ready to where I, um, I don't look for opportunities as much now as I do. Okay. Opportunity to make sure that next guy's ready. Yeah. I've, I, I like to think that if we do our jobs, right. Yeah, as I'm, chiefs, I'm walking out. If, if we do our jobs, right. At some point, there's going to be an opportunity where you and I are going to be like, that looks like fun. And so we apply and then we're like, oh, this, this guy that I've been working on for years, he's applying too. 
right? And if we've done our jobs right, guess what? He wins because he's got his knowledge and our knowledge. And so I've always said that if, if I do my job right, I'll compete against someone that I've mentored and they should win. So, and we'll walk out without a problem, right? Just, I'm good. But that takes a different type of mentality, right? It takes a different mentality because I think sometimes people go into uh, this, uh, uh, it's a competition, right? As, as I'm competing and I'm a competitive person, I, li- I like competing, but I want to compete against the best, which means I've got to give you everything I have to make sure that we're both the best. And that comes with a different attitude. And that's one of the things that uh, I've, I've really enjoyed about getting to know you is your attitude. And so you. Oh, I got one. Yeah. <laughs> we know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, you know, we've been in some stressful situations and, and not stressful in the sense of, you know, uh, people are shooting at us or anything like that, but stressful situations for here. And I love that your attitude when you walk away is, you know, you're, you're usually smiling and you freaking run everywhere. <laughs> so is that why you were out of breath when you walked in I here? <laughs> right here? I was late. <laughs> yeah. So he runs everywhere. So we, it would seem all the time running and I'm like, you know, where are you headed? And he's like, Oh, just over the office. <laughs> like there's no emergency. It just, he's just running. But that added, I think that comes with an added. I think airmen see that and they, they get motivated by it. But what drives that attitude for you? Well, I know it just seems so simple, but I, if I'm running somewhere, it's because either I'm late or at the, you know, I think like at I the spend end of the too week. too much time in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got 20 year old kids. So yeah, they, I know all about long showers. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm running at the end of the week, how much time do I just save? Mm-hmm. And and so I can get more done or I can get home a little bit earlier. Uh, and it just seems simple, but that that is the case. But yeah, do I try to bring energy? Yeah, I do. I try to bring energy uh, every day. And I think that does. Some people will, will feed off of that. It's not fake. It's it's sincere. But um, yeah, I try to bring it. And what what's that motivator behind that attitude? No idea. I mean, yeah, I just motor's taken. Yeah. <laughs> I just got stuff I got to get done. Are you like that outside of here? Yeah. Like, like what's your, um, I don't sit like I'll sit and eat dinner, but I don't like to just sit. You're a cyclist too, right? So you ride. Yeah, I ride, but not, not hardcore. Right. Uh, if, if I got time, I'll ride an hour around the lake and, and yeah. uh, it's about 15 miles and, and I'll, I'll time it, but I'm not really a hardcore do you think do you think um, that you're that you bring that attitude all the time because it's fun? Are you just having fun? Because it seems to me like you're always just having fun. So it, it is fun. You you know when you start counting hours, you're here more than you're at home. Most people, I know, I am, and and uh, boy, if you're going to spend that time around people, you better have fun. And it, really, that is the key. I'm I'm going to have fun. Uh, you can play along if you want, but, <laughs> but really I, I, that is, I know it sounds corny, but I'm going to have fun. I'm at work. And if I'm spending all this time here I, and I'm going to be around people, I, I hope they have fun too. And I, yeah, I'm going to have fun. Do you think that kept you here? Like the fact that, yeah, it is that you're having fun. Yeah, sure. And I, and I've learned that, right. It's I, in 1984, I, I was probably more wide eyed and, and scared uh, but I, as I grew with experience comes confidence and, and there's that fine line between confidence and cockiness. Uh, so, but it is experience and, and know what you can do. Uh, some of that's know what you can get away with and, and have fun with it. Yeah. Do you think you, so you, you talk about as an airman and then kind of go on. So you've, you've kind of developed this attitude. It, yeah, I, I would say, yeah. And as I'm, if I'm trying to correct somebody and, and I can do it in a laughing matter, as long as they get the point, then, then it's good. Such a different approach than basic training where you're getting yelled at to make a point. It depends because some dudes and dudettes at basic training, I mean, some of the TIs, they would yell some stuff that was pretty freaking funny. <laughs> right. You better not laugh though. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. But you're yeah. like, that dude's got it. He's, yeah, I bet mean, he's got a great sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> right. If one of the worst things that happened to me or best, whatever you want to call it is. So after basic training, my airline ticket got screwed up. 
So I was supposed to go to Wichita Falls, Texas, right? And so it got screwed up and they said, hey, uh, it got screwed up. So you're not starting next week. You're going to start in two weeks. And so you're going to stay here at basic. And so they said, but we weren't planning on you staying. And so there's no rooms for you. So I moved from upstairs in the back when we had the, the, you know, the, the basic training dorms like that. I moved from upstairs down into oh, a room to with where all the, the TIs, yeah. right? So all the people for six weeks that had yelled at me and made all these comments. And then I walk in and they're like, you know, one of the TI that he's like, Hey, you know, this is, you know, Nate, he's going to be here for a while with us. And they're all just like, what's up, dude? You know, like put your bags down. We're watching. They were like watching college football. And I'm like, no, I don't like you guys. Like <laughs> you yelled at me. And it, it took me a day to really like, well, these people, they're fun. They have personalities. Like they're funny. And so I think it's just the job that they had at that time. Yeah. Right. But I, I still think it, you can correct them and still have that sense of humor and still, still have that peace and still let them know, hey, I have a job to do here. And my job is to mentor and correct you and, and to keep discipline, good order and discipline in the unit. And, uh, and still do that and have fun. Because I think if not having fun, uh, you, you may have still been here since 1984. But I guarantee you we're not talking to you on this podcast. Well, yeah, I just enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and I'm probably enjoying it now more than I ever have. Why? Why is that? Well, probably because of the job change, yeah. right? I, I am learning something every day in AMXS. And, and I know um, I've been here a long time and I, I probably know how things are supposed to work. But uh, just I don't know the flying operation part of it. And I'm, and I'm learning that every day. Yeah. Do I know? Uh, the admin part I do, but I, the, the flying part that I'm learning every day is just fantastic. And to see those guys out there busting their butt every day and, and girls, they are just, it, it's awesome to see. And it's even like the last week, uh, me and Sergeant Fletcher have been out on, and about on the flight line more just to see it. And, and it's, it's pretty cool. They, 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 they they're really busy. And, uh, I like this last, like yesterday we had, um, a lot of things break, but just to see those guys out there just humping away, trying to get stuff done is, is pretty awesome. And, and it's encouraging. And, and they, it's a chance for them to do their job, right? Right. And a chance for them to highlight. And it's, you think about like, who are the, the airmen casties that are, that are getting ready to stick out in these, these times where it's, it's difficult or, or we're really busting our butt and you start seeing people that you're like, Oh, and that, that person's, performing now like you know i i love seeing that watching that change and watching that um that over time that they kind of they, they change their attitude they change their effort you're like okay now they're starting to get it you yeah know, and it's good to see the other side you know all you see is the epr that isn't done the fitness that is scheduled all you see is that and then when you go out you're like okay uh there's another side to this person and just not the admin side and i'm sure and that just to go sideways here that is the greatest thing about Grissom is, is the people. I mean, you go into any squadron, you go downstairs, you, you're going to see those type of people that are just loving their job, busting their butt to get it done the right way yeah. here at five o'clock AM and five o'clock PM, just to get whatever it does, whatever it takes to get it done. Yeah. It's that it's what I've said is there's, there's a lot of things that we can look at and say, Hey, we need to, we need to improve on this or we need to improve on that. But one thing there's no shortage of is good people. I mean, there's, there's a ton of good people and, and you, so that's a uh, good people. And you <laughs> talking to you, Josh. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you start and you, you start metamorphosing into this like leader, you know, and you're, you're you make it through the ranks and staff and, and tech, and then you hit master. And then you, you really start developing your, your leadership. What do you see uh, that makes a good leader? People, you got to, you got to take care of those people. Yeah. And if you're lucky enough to have good people under you and you're taking care of them, they, they will help you out along the way. They, they will make you look good. And, and I, that's what I had. I mean, every, every stop along the way, 
I had, I had great people to help me out. So and do you have to invest in those people? Like, so you, you've got to invest something there, right? Because. Yeah. But sometimes it's just caring. Sometimes it's just talking to somebody and letting them know and getting their story. It, it, you may not have to invest anything, but, but a conversation or time. And, and in, in some of the cases along the way, I had such good people around me that uh, they were older and, and didn't want that next level job and just help, help me, taught me what needed to be done. But like I said, it's just opportunities and, and that I was given along the way. Do you, then how do you, how do you turn that around now? Like, how do you, you're over in AMXS now. And um, I mean, we got everyone from people in their fifties to people that are, you know, in their teens. So, Same thing. So how do you, how do you create leaders? What are, what are you doing to make AMXS a leadership farm? Well, I'm out front and, and if they have issues, they can come right to me. They have a voice. I, I need to hear what they have concerns about. Um, and, and I do it every day. I'm out, I, I want to hear what their concerns are. I'm, and I'm every UTA I'm out front. I want to know what we can do to make it better. Uh, with the hiring freeze lifted now, we now we can start really growing it uh, between getting supervisors in there and getting positions filled. Now we can really see how this thing's going to get better, in my opinion. So, yeah, in the, in the time that I've been here, you and I have worked a lot on this is is making sure the right people are in the right jobs. And, and oddly enough, that's what I'm moving to with this chief's group is, is making sure the right people are leading the right people. That's great. And, and but this isn't, this isn't about you. It's all about yeah, me. Sorry about sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. I thought you were going to offer yeah, something yeah, awesome. I, yeah, <laughs> I apologize for bringing me up yeah. back to you. Yes, uh, sir. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> as you go through this hiring process, how important is that to hire the right people and it not, is. and you know, because I think the tendency sometimes is man, the dream and I have known each other for a long time. I really want him on my team, but in my heart, I know he's not the right guy for the job. So we, we have done what has been done for a while now. And I'm just kind of carrying along as we, the supervisors and I have a panel and, and we will go through the panel. We'll rate resumes and, and uh, EPRs and what, whatever other information we can get a hold of. And, and so I have those guys rate. I'm short term here. I am not going to be here much longer. And I want them like to have on a, earth or just here. <laughs> <laughs> I, at, just, at, at your age, age you got to clarify. At this age, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so you got to clarify those things. I came here as a baby. Yeah. I'm leaving as an old man. Yes. And I'm surprised it took you this long to get I, some well, old man you know, joke in there. Off. Like I've been holding <laughs> off disappointed. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but I want them to have a buy-in too on, on who their next leaders are. And we're going through that right now where we have some positions open and you've probably seen them out there. I'm, I'm advertising so everybody can see what, what jobs we have and, and we're going through right now and, and rating resumes, trying to get those right people in the right spots. So as these, as these jobs open up and, and across the base, jobs are opening up in leadership uh, positions and in, in all kinds of positions, techs, masters, seniors, like officers, all that stuff. You've been at this for a while. Um, what's your advice? Like, what's your your leadership advice? Like, hey, if there's one thing I can I can give you that will sustain you through the ranks, what is that advice? It's it's a mix. It's a balance of of knowledge and experience and attitude. If you can have all the experience in the world and all the knowledge of an aircraft, but man, if you got a bad attitude, I don't want you around me. And and you got to have that balance. And you got to involve your people. It's not just because you're the supervisor doesn't mean you, you, um, answer all the questions and you got to be willing to step down and, and get that information from your, your mechanics, your specialist. You'll never know as much as they do. You, that's why there's a specialist. You got to get that information from them. Um, just be able to take a step back, um, and don't think you know everything. There's a, a saying through it. I think Theodore Roosevelt was the one that said it. Is he said, uh, they don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. And, and I've tried to base my leadership, you know, off of that is nobody cares how, what information I have until they know that I care about them. Yeah. Like they, they don't, I could have all the answers to all of their problems, but if I don't, I don't care about them, they could care less. 
they're not going to hear it. They're not going to see it. When you, when you came in, not uh, in 80, you came in in 84, 83, right? I came in, yeah. Came in in 83 to now, um, the military has changed quite a bit. And, and I think the rank that you hold right now has changed quite a bit. You talked about walking in and there's a row of chiefs there. Right. And, and it's, uh, when I, even when I came in, we had a chief in our squadron and, and in the three years I was in the squadron, I never talked to the guy because I didn't want to, because <laughs> I had, had usually been, I was in tough kind of trouble or something. So I talked to first sergeant a lot, but never made it to chief. Um, do you see a difference in, in who we are now as chiefs? Is it who we are back then? I do. I, same thing, right? When I came in, yeah, if you were in front of the chief, there was a problem. Uh, now I think in my opinion, you need to be out front. You need to get to know those people you need to. Uh, so when things happen to that family or that guy is not showing up, maybe you know why, or maybe you can understand why. Um, I don't think that that wasn't the case back then. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I think now it is, um, uh, it, it's a need, especially, um, you, you know, I, as I grow up, uh, and old, they, they are also, uh, it is different too. I, I want to reach down and, and get to that, get to that airman and, and have a conversation with them. Um, whereas other, in other places where I was the chief, I felt like no, I don't have time for that. I got here because I, I was caring about the people. Um, but I, I also felt as I became a chief, I, I felt too separated. Um, but now in this job, I feel like I, I'm, I'm there every day and I get to talk to them a little bit more than what, what I was maybe in other squadrons. Yeah. So is that what keeps it, keep it going? Like keeps it going for you? It, like, it is. It's, yeah. it's energetic. I, I wake up. I know it sounds so corny, but I wake up every day just like, man, I, let's go. Yeah. Uh, and it makes me want to stay. What, what time do you get here in the morning? Right around six. And then Not important. I think it's kind of a lie because I get here at six sometimes and you're usually here before that. Well, so, <laughs> so I feel like you get here a little earlier than that. It's the late it's, it, I stay late. Yeah. Well, I know you, you and, and that's the thing is I, I usually honk as I'm on my way out mm-hmm. and, if you're there, you usually give me a good flex. And, oh, or and I a, wave. Or wave, yeah. One finger. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving and you're staying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but it, it's, man, I see your dedication to it. And I see your motivation and I see your drive to it. And, and I will tell you, is it's it's inspiring. And I will tell you, that for me, from from a guy that uh, was an outsider coming in, and I, by my own um, mistakes in my own pieces. Uh, when I, when I came in here, I think I made some pretty big mistakes as I came in, but, but you were always there with a good attitude, with a, a good suggestion on, Hey man, you need to be doing this or that didn't come across the way you, you know, you need, you need to relook at that. And we've had some disagreements and we've had some, you know, some things that we we were able to back each other on and really got to push some things through and some accomplishments. But man, if I, that attitude, man, if I could just capture your attitude and your, that it, it's just infectious. And, and I just want to say thank you for that. And thank you for, um, you know, being that guy that I, I know you got, I, we've had talks. I know you, there's days where you're not feeling it like as far as you got kids that are need needing things from you and, and a, and a wife that, that maybe needing something from you. And, you know, you got to talk about uh, getting to, to your parents or your brother, whatever. And it's like, but then I watch you run to the next meeting. That's why. <laughs> and show up with a smile. Right. And uh, I don't think we can, we can emphasize that enough to, our members is that, man, if you just see the good in things like it, I'm not saying you're just oblivious to the bad, but if you focus on those good things and moving forward, I think it drives you to an, a, a longer career because it's easy to get caught up, you know, in, Hey, we got money problems. <laughs> hey, we got, you know, we got a hiring freeze or sorry, a strategic, strategic pause. hiring pause, yeah. uh, you know, a hiring freeze. And 
it, it's easy to get caught up in those things sometimes. And so it, our airmen, I think, get get caught up in that at times and they look at, well, I, I don't agree with this guy or I don't, I don't look like this guy or I don't look like that gal or I don't like what she says or I don't. So, so what advice do you have for them like to, to develop this attitude in themselves? Good question. I, I, and I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say with that is just remember what your job is. What, what is the focus? And, and ours is to produce uh, safe airplanes for the pilots to fly. That, and then the rest of the stuff will come, right? We, yes, we have to train the people the right way. But we'll get to the EPRs and we'll get the physicals. We'll get that stuff done. But focus on what is important. And that's your job. And, and the supervision, and we'll get through the rest of that. We will take care of that. And we'll take care of you. But um, make sure you're doing the job right the first time and safely. And it, that's really... Uh, but as far as the attitude and it's not fake, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. And, and I think that just kind of spews out of me sometimes. I, I'm having fun. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if, if there's a formula I can give. I, I'm lucky. I'm lucky uh, in life. I got 21 year old twins at Purdue um, doing really well. I got a wife that supports me, whether it's getting up early or staying late or both. Um, she's a teacher in Knowlesville and, and, and I support her just the same. So I'm, I'm lucky in, in that I have that support to where I can stay the long hours if I want, but, um, uh, it comes out, you know, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just lucky. Yeah. And I, I, and I thank think you, I, I mean, yeah. Do I spout off when I shouldn't? Probably, but, but I have you Colonel Mayberry that allows me to do it. Um, you sat in my seat, Colonel Pemberton, that yeah. valued your opinion, you know? Yep. Yeah. I, I, I love it. And I, I think even uh, last weekend, I was like, hey, I'm going to be down in your area. Let's, you know, let's go grab a bite or whatever. And, and so you come up with a bad excuse. But anyways, uh, but I love what you said is I said, hey, what do you got planned for the weekend? And he said, hey, my wife's starting school here in a couple of weeks and we got we to gotta get the classroom. It was, <laughs> it, was, it was a we, right? And it was... But even the joy that you had in that, like, it wasn't like a, yeah, dude, man, <laughs> not a good weekend ahead of me. Like I, <laughs> it was a, there was some genuine excitement in, and I get to help my wife. Uh, I just think that's infectious. And it's, um, you know, we talk about it on, all time on here, Josh, on, on just being a good person goes a long ways. Like, Doing what's right and being good to people goes a long ways. And what do you think this job is, this, this career has meant to you? Like, what's the value in this? I really, I couldn't even tell you. I keep it very simple. You know, I, I'm, I'm working here every day. So when I retire, I can have a good life. And and don't have to work anymore. That's coming. I can, I can feel it. But it, I it's very simple, right? I'm I'm not doing anything any anybody else can't or shouldn't. I'm just I'm doing my job. It's that simple to me. Yeah. I, I'm not uh, doing anything you're not doing. It's just yep, earning money so I can retire. I you're, know it's you're just having more fun than us. But that's <laughs> well, fine. I think that's a I, I think a valid point though, and I think uh, the 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 piece that's kind of running through his is we all have choices. We're all dealt cards that sometimes we can control, sometimes we can't. But the choice is what you do with that. The choice is whether you show up and you're all sour and you're like, God sakes, man, like I'm sick of them throwing stuff at me, or you show up and you're like, man, what's next? You know, what's the next piece? And I think it's when you show up with that attitude, when you do make a mistake, people look at you like, they'll recover. They'll recover. But you show up with the attitude of, you know, doom and gloom and, and you know, all those things. And one mistake comes and people are like, that's it for that person. Like, they're done. They are done. And I think so it builds in. We talk about building resilient airmen all the time. This mentality that you have, that's, it's resiliency 101. It's, hey, do something you love, get excited about it, and stay excited about it. Take on a new challenge. I mean, you, 
there was, I remember when, when, uh, uh, Chief Scully was retiring and you said, Hey, let me go to AMXS. Like, let me, let me. And it's like, Hey, you're in the nine golf. Like you, is that really what you want to do? <laughs> and you're like, yes, yes. That's what I want to do. I, I want to, and I, I want to be in the middle of it. I want to be in the mix. And then, you know, three, four months in when, we, you know, had some rough times or whatever. And then it's like things, you're just like, love it, man. Like, this is great. And then you're, you're like thanking me for, you know, supporting you doing two jobs. And I'm like, well, yeah, you, how are you, why are you thanking me for this? Like, you know, we owe you a debt. And so, uh, but it, it's just, we all have those choices and man, there's so many opportunities today. We, we, we sent a guy off and I'm going to steal a little bit of your thunder, uh, Josh, cause I know that you're going to do a, a article on this guy, but he's 39 years old. So stick around and you won't be the oldest guy here much longer. Right? <laughs> I, I, I can verify that he said that. In the- <laughs> I, said to, I said, Chief Cassidy will be happy to know. Uh, that That's my he, grandson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he's, yeah. so he turns 40 at basic training. He's from Puerto Rico. Um, come to the United States uh, in the 90s and um, dropped out of high school. He was a straight A student. Dropped out of high school to take care of his mother who was sick with cancer. So went, got a job so he could work and, and take care of his mother. So started working, ends up getting a job, getting a good job. Um, and here about seven years ago, his mom passes away. So he, he took care of his mom up to that point. So he, he says he, he got real sick and um, was running some high fevers and stuff. And he said, in one of those times, he felt like he was hallucinating. He said, but in the middle of a hallucination, he said it was very vivid. His mom said, you had a dream and you put your dreams on hold for me, but I'm gone. What's stopping? So this young man, you know, at this time is, is 33 years old, says, all right, as a kid, I always wanted to go in the Air Force. I'm going to go. So he goes to the recruiter, does all this stuff. They say, hey, man, uh, you got to have a high school education. <laughs> like, that's a bare minimum. So he goes, gets his GED. Studies for two weeks, takes tests, gets his GED. Goes back, says, what's next? I said, all right, we'll put you through. They do medical. They're like, hey, man, can't go in. Why is that? Well, you have your wisdom teeth still. And because of your age, you probably experience this a lot, age discrimination. So because of your age and you have a wisdom teeth, can't do it. So he says, okay. So he goes back and he goes, I'll, I'll get him taken out myself. And they were like, unfortunately, it has to be done by a military doctor, military specs. He finds a guard captain and says, Will this work if he signs off as this is done at military specs? Yeah, but the guy's a civilian dentist also. Yep, this will work. $25,000 later. Gets his teeth taken out. Gets some kind of infection. So he goes back and they go, yeah, you've got this infection going in here. Can't go in. So he's like, okay. Gets that taken care of. Goes back. They finally say, the, the army says, hey, now you're too old. Can't go in the military. So he is walking out of the recruiter's office and the Air Force guy goes, did I hear them say that you're too old? It's like, yeah. It's like, we'll do a waiver for you. So this Air Force recruiter, you know, stops him on his way out, does the waiver, uh, He's getting ready to leave to go to basic training and uh, something happens. He, he get, his basic training class gets canceled. It happens three times, right? The fourth time he's getting ready to leave, he finally like finds Sergeant Kai in 
in shout out to Sergeant Kai in Indianapolis. And he's Sergeant Kai works with him, works with him, works with him, gets him to where he's like, okay, this is like number four. He's going to leave. And like the day before he's leaving, his significant other has a, a bad car accident. So he has to postpone it. Today he left for the Air Force. And I look at that guy and I'm like, that dude wants to be here. Like, and to me, those are stories, and you and I have talked about this before. Those are the stories that inspire me. Those are the stories that make me, when I'm looking at what's in front of me and I want to complain, I'm like, that dude went through all that just to get here. Just to get here. And, and, and does it voluntarily to complete those. So I just, I'm inspired by that. I, I love those kind of the, the perseverance. I love all the pieces that you've accomplished to, to get uh, to this point. And I will say that I don't know how you'll be in retirement, um, but I know you've earned it. I know that there's a lot of people that you say you got two kids, but there's a lot of people that, that you have mentored and brought along the way that I've seen from the time I've been here. No telling uh, since 1984, all the lives that you've changed. So, um, all right. Uh, thanks for being here, but we're going to, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to have a little bit of fun. So Josh told me to skip some stuff, but we're not going to because we're going to skip it because you ruined it. No, I didn't ruin it. <laughs> So, all right. As you, uh, you should be used to that. As you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't ruin things. Well, but as as you go, since you since you go into retirement, um, it, you're going to do something outside of the Air Force. These are actual interview questions that you may face if you're going to like Chick Fil A. I, I, I thought see you, you were going to get a job, and then you said, "No, yeah. I've worked so hard. I'm just not no, going to no. work anymore." He will. Well, I he'll will. work it. He'll work it like Chick Fil A or something like Walmart that. Walmart like greeter. Yeah, welcome he's to Walmart. A, yeah, welcome to Walmart. So these are actual interview questions. Josh and I will play the interviewers. Uh, we'll get you prepared for your retirement stuff because it's probably been a hot minute since you've had an interview, right? Um, Yes. So we're really <laughs> into the emotional intelligence. So we're going to ask you a lot of emotional intelligence questions. And you kind of look like an avatar. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Plastic. Uh, plastic. Yeah. <laughs> it's fake. <laughs> so uh, first question we would ask you is, would you rather have no nose or no arms? I, no nose. Uh, so quick story. I had this thing smashed on the side of my face playing ball one day. And so it's plastic anyway, so you can just take it off. You know? <laughs> yes. Or if I get by a uh, get get by a microwave, it will probably melt. It had melted all down. <laughs> yeah, that's and, the best. And you think if they were going to that's like, the best they could do. I know like, they, they might have shrunk yeah. it a little bit. Is that a military doctor maybe made it straight. Was that yeah? All right. Uh, next question is: If you had to describe yourself as a as an animal, what would be your spirit animal? A jaguar. As fast as I am, you see me running around here? Oh, a jaguar. <laughs> All right. All right. Mine's a snapping turtle. A snapping so, turtle? Yeah, dangerous on the water and on ground. <laughs> you, you can't you take me anywhere. Uh, I, <laughs> I have no idea what mine would be. I've never thought this about it. Because this is a cult. Because you're a Colts fan. You're just a, maybe I mean, a donkey. We'll go with that. Maybe Did a donkey. No, not a donkey. No. <laughs> yeah, Jess is a donkey. That's it. That'd be a great answer in an interview. What did you think your spirit animal is? Probably a donkey. <laughs> Before, you know, and these are actual mule. interview questions? Yeah, these, these are, are actual. actual yeah. They, no, they have been asked. I assume they're from companies yeah. that are looking for, I don't know, like outside the box this thinkers. Is a good one. This is a good one for you. If you had to have one superpower, what would it be? I think Plastic Man would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're halfway I mean, there. I, yeah. mean, I could just reach across and pop you right in the head right now. Right, and they just they just see <laughs> that's like rubber, like a log plastic or what? Just like stretch, oh, you know, like stretch Armstrong. Yeah. yeah. All right. Is that a suit? Okay, that's not really super. Hard. It's not, but He's, that's fine. Hey, yeah. I ain't into that Marvel crap. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't watch that stuff. Yeah, I don't either. All right. He's well, more of an old school Batman. That's when he did that <laughs> slap in his head. He saw blam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have those on VHS if you want them. No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> 
So I did see that in our conference room, true story, in our conference room, if you open it up, there's a uh, VCR player that's hooked up to the TV in case you want to watch any VCR <laughs> movies in there. So, but whatever. Uh, and those of you at home, Google VCR. So uh, one last question, and then we'll get into what are we loving? So um, if animals could talk, which one do you think would be the rudest? Rudest or most annoying? Yeah. Either or. Chihuahua is probably the most annoying. <laughs> yeah. I think an Mark. elephant probably go the other way with it. Like, what are you looking at? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> What's yeah. your problem? Want to fight all the time? Yeah. 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 Break that over here. See yeah. what happens. <laughs> Come here, tough guy. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me that water belt. See what works with you. It's, uh, I mean, I, I really appreciate it. We always have a lot of laughs. It's it's good stuff. And and uh, I had a, a couple more questions I want to get to, but Josh ruined it because he talked a lot. But um it happens. The last part that we always talk about is, is what are we loving? So it can be anything from, you know, shoes to whatever, uh, song to in, in time of year, whatever. So uh, to, to start off, Josh will give you a good example. Josh, what are you loving? Oh, sweet. I give you yeah. go first. Yeah. Uh, Besides, it's your birthday. I don't know if everybody heard that, but it's, it's Josh's birthday, birthday on Saturday. Though. Yeah, but see, no one knows what today is. So yeah, today's Tuesday, I think. Yeah, but like the yeah. actual date, it could be like two weeks ago. I don't know. Six or something. Anyways, yeah. uh, what I'm loving right now in this very moment is the fact that uh, Chief Cassidy let me know that he was a Bears fan. Um, and the reason I'm loving that is because if he looks over his left shoulder, he will see a picture of the Colts after they beat the Bears in the Super Bowl <laughs> in 2006. And that's the only thing I have to hold on to as a Colts fan. So that is what I'm loving right that now. That's good. That is good. And there's another one over here. The old well, that, that just Peyton, though. Is that this is, this is from the Super Bowl. Peyton, wearing... first name basis, huh? Yeah. Buddies? We yeah, are. you guys are buddies. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What are you loving? Oh, I'm loving, uh, I know, it's, again, here we go, corny. I love my family. I'm 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 missing my boys. They're they're out on internships right now and, and can't wait to get them back. But, um, yeah. you know, you, you got to enjoy them while you can. Because they're going to be gone before you know it and miss them like crazy. Yeah. You guys do like good family trips too, like Florida and stuff like that. Yep. And, yeah. yeah. And we've done them forever and we just don't do them enough now. I mean, because they're, they're going to college kids. Um, you know, I'm not as, as cool as I think I used to be. Uh, so <laughs> I love the story of, I love the story. It, one of his kids at a frat says, Hey, we're having a, can you bring this stuff up? We're having a frat party tomorrow. And, and he's like, sure. I mean, you want me to stick around? Maybe, <laughs> maybe hang out, right? I said he's like blue. I was yeah, old, old school. school. Old school is blue. <laughs> and his dad's like, no, we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm here. And they come out the door to get their stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Don't get out of your car. I'll be right there. <laughs> I'll be right there. Yeah. They're, they're both in France and just loving it. They're, yeah. they're loving the college life and living it. And yep, jealous like crazy. Yeah, but they're, they're great. Fantastic kids and... And, uh, you know, you can talk about all the accomplishments I've had here. Those two are, are my, are my best. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I would say for me, it's, uh, I, I don't know this time where, you know, I have a, a job on the horizon, uh, that I'm going to, but still enjoying the moment here is it's just getting to see the goodness that's here, you know, just that it just becomes way more vivid, you know, and, and, uh, just loving the people here and having great conversations. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just been amazing. I spent a uh, bunch of time with some of the AMX S people, uh, down at Codery for some, their little happy hour burger stuff, you know, and it ended up being like 20 Grissom people that came through there. And it was just, it's great. And, and so uh, just loving that, enjoying it. So, but thanks again for, for taking time out of your day. I know that you, you're going to run back to me. <laughs> <right here. laughs> no, thanks for the invitation. I, I, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. And, and that's fake, but it really, I have. <laughs> trust me, it's fake. How many times have you been asked to be on here? <laughs> so no, it, it's different. You know, it's, it's not easy. You don't want to sound like a complete dork, but yeah. I, I think I've pretty much handled that. Uh, I am a dork. Yeah, but we, <laughs> you cleared that up. If there was any question, yeah, there was there's question. any question, we cleared it up today. <laughs> Heard it here. So, uh, no, I really appreciate it. Appreciate the work, and I appreciate all that you have, have taught me and, and all that uh, the support that you've 
you've given to me and the, the mentorship and stuff over these last couple of years. And, uh, man, I, I, I look forward to, uh, seeing what you choose to do, you know, next year. And I could not be any happier for the men and women of the maintenance group or, and AMXS, uh, because I see the energy changing and, and, and it's starting to match your energy, which is pretty phenomenal. So, uh, appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, have a good UTA. Thank you. All right. Always fun to hang out with that guy. He is uh, an amazing individual with a lot of energy. Uh, just great dad. He's, he's uh, I mean, inspired me so much and, and, and challenged me to be better and, and more energy and stuff. And just happens to be a, a chief here at Grissom. So a lot of fun. So, um Hey, one of the things we talked about in there was making sure that we're hiring the right people and putting the right people in the right places. And so some good news that we can offer to you is the strategic hiring pause or whatever they want to call it. The hiring freeze is more or less what it was, is, has been lifted. And so uh, we're, we're getting back after that of, of, of hiring individuals. And, and as we move forward, let's think about those things. Let's think about the things that, that we talked about is, is making sure that we're hiring the right people. The, the right people to fulfill that position, the right people uh, to lead, the right people to take Grissom um, into the future and, and continue and sustain this mission that we have here. It, the last few weeks, Colonel Pemberton and I have got to travel all over Africa and D.C. and California and you know, Georgia, all over the place and represent uh, you guys, the, the great men and women that serve, the airmen that serve here at Grissom. And I will tell you that it's an honor. Uh, it's, it's been great everywhere we know or everywhere we've went to, to be known that, uh, you know, we had some generals in a, uh, the wing commander in the, in the command chief conference that we were just at. We had some generals talk about Grissom's doing great things out there with the bivouac area and just uh, those, those pieces. So make sure that we're, uh, we're continuing to be. Um, innovative and, and coming up with new ways to use the resources that we have here. Thanks for, for everything that you guys do and have a great UTA.